Hello Journals for Life fans, friends, and ice cream cone kit makers. I am Andrea with Journals for Life and we are here to make an ice cream cone mini album. Super excited to share this with you today. These kits were um, for sale on the website for a while. I'm completely sold out so there are no more available. Um, However, you can still purchase the die, and a lot of you did purchase the die to follow along with this class. So I'll show you what is in the kit that I don't have anymore, and I'll also show you what you'll need if you don't have the kit. So you could pause and go get what you need. And then also in the description, I'm going to leave um, a directory of uh, what I'm doing when, so you can fast forward through the tutorial to find the places that you need. So if you come back and want to assemble more albums and you want to skip this whole preamble here now in the front, you can do that by going to the location that um, the chapter is in. So first what we'll do is we're going to overview the supplies that you need and the supplies that were in the kit. Then we're going to overview the tools that you need to have. After that, we'll assemble the album base because it'll take a little bit to dry, so we'll do all the wet glue in and all the sticky stuff. After we do that, we will add layers and then we will finish up with photos and decoration. So you can skip to those parts um, as you need to throughout this tutorial. So if you purchased the kit from me, you got a printout of class pre-work tips and supplies and tools. If you did not purchase the class kit, this is linked below, so you'll want to pause and you'll want to go print this out, but not yet. Let's t let me tell you what the tools are so you can go get your tools and print this out at the same time. So the tools that you're going to need for this class it's going to be, you're going to need some papers, you're going to need some craft card stock. You want to make sure it's all the same color as your base. So out of the three that you cut that are five by five, um, you'll also want some cones that are the same color. So grab, you know, two or three pieces of craft card stock that match, or at least you'll get the front and back cone and the spine um, the same color so it looks cohesive. You'll grab out some different scraps and papers that you want to use. I've already cut mine. Um, so I cut some bases and some cones in different colors. So you'll need to grab out some scraps or some color papers. You will need your die. So if you just bought this die only, or if you purchased the class kit, the class kit has this die. It has four shaker mixes that look like this because we're going to make some shakers. I'm only going to make two on camera. Um, these two sequins were bonus and you can make one later or not use it, whichever you decide to do. But we're going to make these two shakers as part of the Stress My Craft album that Shalini did. We're going to do these two. You, If you bought the class kit, you have some word strips. You have the Sweet Treats die cut pack. You have a pack of this with cherries and with hearts. It looks just like that. You have the waffle cone grid. So this says four by four, but it is six by six. I'm not sure, I must have been tired when I typed this up, but it's waffle cone grid, six by six. This is a six by six. And if you're stumbling across this video and want to take part, you can still purchase this waffle cone grid and this ice cream cone die from Dress My Craft and then source some of these other things um, in order to follow along with the kit. Also in your kit are some overlays, some transparencies, and let's see, a small bottle of this brown paint t-shirt paint that's nice and pretty and shiny it's a small bottle from the kit and what else did you have you have four foam pieces for the shakers that look like this these four outlines these are foam for the dimension 
and let's see and last but not least you have the charm clip so I added this little flower but if you bought the class kit you've got gummy bears and you've got two ice cream treats on there and you've got this charm clip for the end so that's what's in the kit if you don't have the kit then you're going to want to grab out similar supplies at a minimum you're going to need this waffle cone grid stencil you can instead of using this you can cut extras of these this just gives it layer it makes the spine look cohesive like this but you don't necessarily need it but if you do like this look or if you have something similar on hand grab out some grid um, for the album back or you can just simply use these to make that waffle cone pattern and cut out more of those and you'll need this die you'll need this uh, dress my craft ice cream cone shaker die okay so that is the list and so for the tools you'll also want to grab out some tools so the tool list is a blending tool I have this brown blending brush we will be blending brown for the base here so you'll want to grab out a blending tool um, a light and dark shade of brown I use distress oxide I have a lighter color I think I have wild honey and I used either espresso or brush corduroy to layer so brown blending tool a brown ink you will also need liquid glue with a fine tip you'll need a tape runner you will need scissors you will need a um, paper trimmer the paper trimmer is to trim down either your photos or make little mats for the photos that's what you'll be using the paper trimmer for and you'll need a hole punch you can either use a crocodile or just a regular old punch we need that for the back here and you'll also need for the syrup that we're going to do the chocolate syrup get a spoon a plastic spoon would work or a plastic knife I just had happened to have this one here but you'll need a plastic um, utensil because we're going to kind of spread the um, chocolate syrup a spoon works really good like the back of the spoon the bowl part to kind of smooth it out or like a plastic knife or you can use something like this if you have a um, spreader tool for stencil case and I have this one too so something like that it could be this or it could be either of these two you'll need to grab that out and that's what you'll need okay so for cutting out the pieces the bases you're going to print this is all on this sheet of paper so you can print out both sheets of paper with everything that I just talked about the class supplies the pieces of the die what you need what was in the kit and what you need to pull from your stash is right here and you can print that out so the papers that you're going to need you'll need to cut down and this was class pre-work with the kit so if you haven't done this class pre-work yet or if you only purchased the die You'll need to cut out three five by five craft cardstock squares. They need to be the same khaki color. You are going to need 14 waffle cone bases. So here are some choices for you. You can either cut out 14 bases and the base is this piece here and it's labeled on the pre-work sheet. So the base is this piece right here so you're going to need 14 of these because we have 14 cones so you're going to glue the base in the album the album um, it, this is going to be khaki I tried this with some vanilla ice cream so that's why it's white I've experimented but this is going to be khaki made from this so you want to cut out 14 bases that are going to go in there. And you can see my 14 bases, just the base piece. Okay, so you need 14. I, I chose different colors instead of all khaki, but you can either choose all khaki. So if you want to make your waffle cone out of khaki and you want them all to look exactly the same, you will cut out 14 cone bases out of khaki 
and you will cut out 14 waffle cone overlays. Okay, if you want to be experimental like I did, you're still going to need 14 of these cone bases. So I cut some out of different colors. So I took some scraps and I was able to put three dies on one because it was just quicker. So I cut out some cones in different colors because look how cute. I just think it, it's really cute to mix and match. It doesn't all have to be khaki. So that's my style. I'm going to mix and match with some of these colorful cones and I may even do like a double stack. So I didn't have to have khaki bases. However, if you do, that's fine. Just cut them out of whatever you want to cut them out of. I didn't cut out colorful overlays, the, these. I didn't cut out a waffle for these. Um, I only cut out the waffle for the ones that I'm going to do khaki waffle cones like that. So you'll need 14, 14 of these, 14 of these, okay? When you're done doing that, you're also going to need um, 12 to 14 scoops of any colors. And you see I just grabbed some scraps and I cut these. Now, one of these dies, the outline die that makes the, this outline die that makes these top outlines and it also makes those foam pieces that make your album stand up. These pieces right here. This is how you're able to get the, the shaker in there because you can cut this out of foam. So this piece right here with the, with the um, like thin cutout here, it's called the outline. It's this one right here, it's called the outline. You will use the outline to cut four foam pieces. And I just use a sheet of foam that you can get at any local craft store. If you bought the class kit, you already have these. I sent you these. So this is just a thin piece of foam from a craft store. And you put that outline on there and you're gonna cut out four foam pieces to get your shaker. Okay, also, so four foam pieces, if you have the kit, it's in there. If you don't have the kit and you want to make some shakers, grab out some things that will shake a shake and cut you some um, outlines out of foam, okay? Also, you're going to want to cut some outlines out of paper. So on the pre-work, it says cut six outlines from paper. So these outlines look like this and they go on top of here. So it looks like this when you assemble it, if you want some outlines. If you don't want the outlines, this, that's fine. You can stack them up, but the outlines are really cute and the outlines are important for the shaker because it covers the foam. So like this. So the bottom part is the base and then you glue the foam in And then you put your transparency over. I'll show it to you in a minute. And this piece covers the foam. And it comes out looking like this. All right, so four foam outlines and six regular outlines. So regular paper outlines like that, okay? And it's on this pre-worksheet. All right, after you get all of that together, um, we'll start assembling. So go ahead and pause, print out the sheet, gather these supplies, and come back. All right, my friends, so you've cut out all of your things and you want to sort them out. So I sorted mine out. I put all of my outlines together. These were all made from scraps. Look how fun, just super cute. These are the outlines that go on top and also make the shakers. Here's all my scoops. I've got all kinds of different looking scoops here. I sorted those out into a pile. You should have 14 cone bases, whether they're all the same with the khaki overlay or they're a mixture of the two. 
or it's all colorful bases. I just think that's cute. Look how cute. That's gonna look good. Maybe with a contrasting color, you know? Just, see, I like the color paper too. So I have a mixture of both. If you have all khaki, that's good too. It's super cute, look. So you'll need 14 cone bases. Um, you'll need, if you're doing khaki, you'll need 14 khaki overlays. And here's all my cone bases. We're gonna put over here. Um, we will have 14 pages, so you need at least 14. I cut a few extras because I don't like to pause and um, have to cut something out. And in case, you know, you have some trouble with the shaker, they are kind of finagly. It's better to have more supplies cut than less. So how are we going to assemble the album? So we've got all those together. So let's put our album base together. It looks like this. You should have, if you got the kit, you have three of these five by five. Um, I was experimenting with this white for vanilla ice cream. So, but we're going to do khaki on the inside. So we're gonna do khaki that matches your overlays if you're using the waffle cone. So we're gonna do three pieces of khaki and it's going to make the inside album piece and it's going to make the spine. So the spine is one piece and the inside is the other two pieces and I'm going to show you how to assemble those. So you are going to take your five by five paper and you're going to fold it in half. Okay, you can use your finger, you can use a bone folder, you can use a ruler, whatever you feel comfortable with and just flatten that out. If you don't have a tool, you can just use your hands, use your finger, no big deal. Just make sure that these corners line up really nicely before you push it down to crease. This is like those little paper things we used to play with like this, it's the same concept. Okay, so you had half in half, right? So now you're gonna do triangle, triangle. So triangle this way. Okay, and then you're going to do triangle the other way, so crease it this way, okay, all right, so you did half, fold in half, fold in a triangle, fold in a triangle, okay, all right, so here is the fun part, there are two ways you could fold this. Um, so I want to make sure you don't fold it the wrong way. This is one way where it makes the star. If you fold it this way, these are going to be too long. Okay, you don't want to fold it that way. You want to fold it the opposite way. You want to fold it. Let's see if I can get it. You want to push the points in. Okay, so you want to push the... You want to make sure that the creases that you have, the creases and the this part, you're going to crease it this way. And you're going to push it those up. Okay, there's two ways to do that. You want to make sure that this one, this is the shorter one, that this one is pushed up. Okay? And that's the shorter piece. It looks like this. If you push up the wrong side, you'll push it up like this. And this is too, this is too wide. This is pushing up the middle piece. So on the wings, you want to make sure that the crease is up. So it's creased this way going in. See these creases? Crease them and push them in like that, okay? If you're pushing it in, okay, like that, you should be able to put an ice cream cone like this, it looks like that, okay? Okay, they should both 
match like so. Okay, just like that. All right, one more time. So the four flaps on the outside that form a star like this. So you see how I could flip this over and then it's long, that's, that's incorrect, okay? Don't wanna do that. You don't wanna flip it in that way. You want the diamond side up. It's like this crease side up and you want to push the crease side up to the middle. going to look just like that. All right. So now we're going to glue it. When we do FAQs at the end, if that is still confusing, let me know. Okay. It's going to be this piece folded going up just like that. If your piece, when you go up, the corners aren't folded, tented like this, you're going the wrong direction. These corners need to be tented up, okay? All right, so we're gonna put a little bit of glue in the middle here. We're going to put a little glue here. You don't wanna get too close to the top. If you get too close to the top, it'll leak out and get everywhere. All right, so remember, this is this is crucial. I'm going to say it again. You want these to be folded and tented up. These. Make sure that they're folded and tented up. Okay, and you're going to push it together like this. Okay, you see how I've got glue leaking out of it. Wipe that off. I ran out of baby wipes, so we're going to do old-fashioned paper towels and water. So there you go. So that is it. That is one piece for the middle. And then we're going to glue this one. Okay, we're gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna put glue in the middle. I'm gonna try to put a little lost glue so I don't get it coming out the top and glue the whole thing together and it's not usable. All right, remember again, the four corners are going to tent up. See how this one's wanting to go that way? That's the wrong way. If you go that way, it'll be too big. You want to tent it up, bend it up. Okay, bend it up, bend it up. I'm gonna glue it together towards each other. Okay, smooth it out. There you go, that's it. So probably you'll wanna take both of these and just clip them, put like a little clip on them. Um, we can set them under a bucket, but we are going to let them dry. And I'm going to move them over here and clip them together so they dry, because that's going to be the inside of the spine that we're about to assemble. Okay, so clamp those up, move them away. Next, we are going to do the inside. So you are going to fold this last five by five piece into a triangle. So fold it over into a triangle and use your bone folder or finger and it's gonna look like this. And this is gonna form the spine and it looks like this. Okay, so that's what this is going to become. So before we assemble it though, we are going to use our grid stencil and we're going to stencil it, okay? So if you don't have one of these Make Art stations, they are amazing. Um, it's a seven inch Make Art station by Wendy Becky. I use it all the time. I love it, okay? So I'm going to use Wild Honey and Brushed Corduroy. There are tons of colors that you can use. Any brown that you have um, will work. I have experimented with a ton of different colors and this is my favorite combo here. So you are going to grab out your blender, whatever you have to blend, 
and you are going to grab out your 6x6 six six grid stencil and get one color or two colors, brown, whatever you would like. And we are going to put this, I'm going to do it this way and keep it square with me. So when you put this on, you want to square it up just the same. And you want to make sure it's nice and square in there. So I'll show you what happens if you don't get it nice and square. Um, you see this edge right here? You miss it. It gets masked. So you want to make sure that it's sitting in there nice and square so you get the grid all the way to the edge. So I am going to, this is a five by five. Okay, cool. And I'm just going to put magnets on the four corners. And we're just going to go for it. So I usually go with the lighter color first, this wild honey. I'm just going to kind of put that in there. There's another one that's good too. Let's see. Um, this rusty hinge is good. If you don't have wild honey, rusty hinge is good. I use either. Um, just to kind of give it a lighter color for some shading. And then I go back in with the dark brown. I don't put too much of this. I just kind of, you see me just kind of going for it here. Okay, just a little bit of that. Or rusty hinge that looks like that. That's nice. Just kind of like uh, giving it kind of a dimensional layered look. And then I usually grab a darker brown like this. Um, this one's good, or you can use the espresso color. I don't use too much of this either. I just kind of lightly just blend a little bit in. Not a whole lot, just, just enough. And while you have this out, if you want to ink the edges or ink your um, ice cream cone bases, this would be a good time to do it since you have the ink and everything out. I would also distress or if you want to, you know, kind of give this a little bit of a blended look, do that now or this one here if you wanted to like ink the edges. I'm not going to do that, but this would be a good time to do that if you'd like to ink them up. Okay, so that is the cone. I'm going to move these out of the way. And you just get kind of like a nice cone pattern there. This one's kind of um, very light and um, subtle, which I like. If you wanted to go darker, and I have gone darker, um, I put the espresso on top. And that espresso will give you this color instead but I wanted a very subtle kind of waffle cone look and so that's how I'm assembling mine today I'm assembling this one depending on what you want lighter or darker you experiment and have fun with that okay so I'm going to move that out of the way this is going to be our spine so I'm just going to put a little bit of glue together to um let's see Yes, just making sure here. I'm gonna put a little bit of glue. You can use a tape runner if you're more comfortable. You can use a tape runner um, or use some liquid glue. Just kind of make sure that it's tacked down really well. And we're gonna close that up. Okay, so this is going to be the back of your album. This is gonna be it. All right, so now we're going to assemble the album. So our pieces are dry here. So we're going to put this together in here. And how are we going to do that? Well, first we are going to glue these two pieces together. And you can do it a couple ways. You can either use a tape runner. If you wanna use a tape runner to tack it, Okay, you can, 
Um, I would put some glue around it too. Okay. Okay, so that is your spine. And if you wanted to edge it, ink the edges or whatever you want to do with that, you can go ahead and do that now if that's something you want to do, or you can do it later. But that, so that's the basis of your ice cream spine. See that? Isn't that cool? Okay, so to put this whole thing together, you are going to Put an outline of glue on either side. I would use the liquid glue. Make sure you spread it out to the edge here because you want that to stick really well. Okay, so when you glue this, there are two sides to this. You see the open-ended side and the folded side. You wanna put the folded side up. So this folded side is going to go up. And what you're going to do is line this up with this cone. So this is how you line it up. You're gonna line it up like that. So we lined it up with the cone, and now it looks like this, okay? Line that up nice and neat. Give it a second or two to dry. My glue is very fast drying. If yours is not, then you're going to want to pause, set this aside, and let it dry. Okay, so how are we going to do this? These pieces are going to fold. They're going to fold down like this. You can see it clearly with the white inside. You're going to fold it to where this piece is aligned with this piece. So, okay, go over to one side. I've got glue all over my fingers. Okay, you're going to grab this piece. Don't, don't crease it first. Uh-oh, looks like I'm coming apart here. Let's fix that. Let's give that a second. Okay, so you don't want to crease this piece here first. You want to line this piece up first. You want to align this about half an inch from the inside of Okay, not even half an inch, a quarter inch. So you want to line this up about a quarter inch from the fold, okay? So pull it down. A quarter inch is going to still give you some flexibility in the spine and it's gonna align this piece here. So you're going to bend it now, okay? So then we're going to glue this down. This is going to be the stability of the album. That's how it stays stable. Okay, and it's really important that you don't get glue too close on the edges because you will glue the whole album together. Believe me, I know. And if you do that, just dab the glue away. Have a baby wipe or a paper towel and just dab it away. Okay, so that flips down that side. I'm going to flip it over. We're gonna move our pages over, okay? We're gonna bend this piece down to about a quarter of an inch. Mm -hmm. You're gonna hold it down and you're going to bend it like that. Okay, looks like it's got a jacket on now, or like a shawl. See that? Okay, so let's glue the flap in. This is also gonna add stability to the spine of the album. Okay, 
Okay, and I'm going to wipe off any excess glue because we don't want to glue this paper together. Okay, and close it all up, wipe off any excess glue, and there's your spine. There's your album spine. And you can make this over and over and over and over again. If you want to add more cones, you'll do the same thing um, with bending it. So the great thing is, as this expands, let's say you put four in instead of three, this will be shorter. So you just bend it down, you, you bring the corner of this piece down, and you bend it here. So this expands it. So if you want the album to be bigger, all you have to do is just put all your signatures in, and then this wouldn't bend down as far. The, the higher up it bends, the more signatures you can put in, if that makes sense. So you just wouldn't bring this as far down as we did. Um, the signatures will actually make it expand and you'll have plenty of room to put in your cute album. So there we go. All right, friends, the next step is going to be assembling the cone pieces. All right, friends, so we have cut everything out and we have pieced together our album here. So the next step is going to be deciding which ice cream cones you want in your album. So first, I'm going to kind of lay out what ice cream cones I want, and then um, I'll glue a couple together, and then you can pause and then glue yours together. So if you want to do all cones, um, you're going to pause the video and you're going to assemble these overlays on all your cones. And if you're going to mix and match, you'll just glue your bases in. So I am going to do a few here on camera, and then we'll pause. And after you get started, you can go ahead and glue all your pieces together. I'm not going to do that on camera um, to bore you, so we'll. I'll just do a few. So the first thing I like to do you can, if you want, just put a um, scoop on the front. I am going to put a shaker. So we're going to the shaker. So, and then I put a ice cream cone with an overlay. So you can either put the shaker on there by itself without the need for a cone and overlay. Um, I like the cone and overlay on the front, so I'm going to put a cone and overlay together. And this is where I'm probably going to transition to using my um, tweezers a lot, just because I have a really hard time with depth perception and holding things. So I'm going to utilize my scissors as a tool, and I can bring it up to my face instead of putting my head in the camera. Um, so that is what I'm going to do. So, the trick here is when you put glue on, and my fine tip is clogged. I have tried and tried to unclog it, so I don't have a fine tip. This is the finest tip that I have. If you don't have a fine tip, it's okay. You can do what I'm doing here, and just trying to put as little glue as possible in some key areas. You can also like tap it here, and try to spread the glue, you know, wipe it off. And if you do have a fine tip, that's amazing. You'll just put like a little fine tip around. The tip here is, though, is to let it dry, not finagle it too much, not play with it too much. So just grab it, like tap it down. You see how there's glue? You can see the glue here. You're going to want to touch it or wipe it off. Don't. It dries clear. You can't tell once it dries. The best thing that you can do is take it and put it over here and let it dry and not, not manipulate it too much. So go ahead and do that. So put your cones together um, just like that. Take them and put your overlays together. Okay, so pause now if you need to do that, if you need to take these 
and put all of your cones together. I'm going to do just one more and then I'll transition to the other bases and what I'm going to do with those. Okay, this is if you don't have a fine tip, you can just take it and spread the glue because you don't want it to come through too much. You just want it just a little bit. So you don't want it, it's okay if a little bit does like that, but you don't want too much to come through. If it does in a couple spots, just leave it. It will dry clear. Manipulating it actually makes it worse and you just have to trust the process, okay? Tap that down. Okay. Tap it down and then pick it up. Let it dry. Okay. So go ahead and pause and assemble if you're going to assemble the craft and the waffle cones. Assemble all your cones together. Okay. The next thing is deciding if you're going to use colored paper or patterned paper and which ones that you're going to use. So I know that I'm going to use craft on the front and back. Now I'm going to decide like which cones I want to make. I like that pink one. I like that one too. That's cute. I know I want to do a lemon one, so I have a lemon dye and I made a couple lemons from another Dress My Craft dye. I think it's really cute. I don't know if I want to do like lemon and lime. And if I do, I think I want a plain base. Okay. Let's see, what did I do in this one? Oh, I did a green outline. That's a good idea. So cute. Do a green outline and possibly that. See how cute that is? So this is just deciding what you want. Do you want pattern paper? Do you want the cone bases, the craft? kind of putting that together. I think this one needs an outline. Might be a little much going on there. Okay. Cool. That's good. I like it. I like it. I like it. Okay. What should we put on that pink? Mama, mm, mama, mama. Like a strawberry. Ooh. Ew. Ooh. 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 Yes. 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 Gonna play around until something uh, catches your eye. Almost kind of looks like cotton candy a little bit with that pink stripe in there. Then maybe okay. I think that's good. And then I'll probably um, also do some of these. All right. So. If you've paused and put all your bases together, excellent. Um, so did I. So now I've decided I'm gonna do one, two, three, four, five. Let's see. And then I think I'm going to do, I do want another chocolate cone. So I think I'm gonna do maybe 
Neapolitan. So I'll do that one. I'm going to use some of the white foam off cuts that came out from the outlines. They have some glitter ones like this. I'm going to use a couple of these to make a double stack chocolate. So I'm going to use that, that piece to do it. And I think that's good for me. I think that's good. So I'm going to set these aside. I may leave that orange out because I do like it. I'm going to set it aside and when I get to playtime, I may switch them out. I'm not really sure, but this is the kind of tentative plan that I have right now. Okay. All right. I like it. So the next thing that we're going to do is I'm going to actually stop and pause because I'm going to put together my waffle cones and then we'll come back together and put all the cones in at one time. So I'll see you in a minute. All right, friends. So now that we've decided what we want in our album, we are going to set those aside because we're going to do this sticky and dry -y, uh, part now. So we're going to put these aside. I already know which how I want to do these. Um, so let's put them aside. I'm going to have all these fun things. Here are my cones. So these are all ready for assembly now that I've kind of got them together and I know what I want to do. I know how I want to layer those. So let's make the shakers and the um, syrup now that we've picked out what I want. I know that this one is going to have to a double scoop of syrup. So now let's set that aside. Let's do that and it will take a little while to dry. So we'll assemble these and put them aside while we put our papers in our album. Okay, so let's do the sticky and shaky part. Okay, so I'm only going to do, I'll assemble two on camera and then you can pause and assemble the other two. Okay, so I'm going to do this shaker one with the little colorful um, beads and you can do whatever you want sequins if you don't have the class kit just grab something glitter um, if you do glitter it's good to use your powder tool and put some um, if you have a powder tool like this and there's different kinds of powder tools I would put powder on the inside on um, the paper in the back and maybe the transparency a little bit so the glitter just doesn't all stick um, it helps it kind of you know float in there shake in there so and you'll want to grab some of that or some sprinkles or some sequins if you have the class kit just grab out two packs of whatever you want to assemble live here and you're going to need your tweezers or I suggest you use tweezers because getting this layered is a little ticky so if you have tweezers grab some tweezers if you don't it's okay we'll just be careful um, in assembling it together and you are going to need your transparency pieces and outlines so you'll need four bases now make sure that you're getting bases. The bases aren't, you see these little thin ones? Let me show you the difference between the base. This is the base. This is what I'm talking about. You need the cone base. You don't need the inside of the outline. This is the inside of the outline. How can you tell? Because it's smaller, okay? You don't want the smaller ones. You want the big ones. You want the cone. So the big one, is this one. This is the base. You want the scoop. You don't want that inside of the outline. I reuse those and layer them. That's fine. But for the shakers, you want the big piece. That. Okay. So get two big pieces for your shakers. And I think I'm going to use this one for this one. 
Okay, and you'll need, so you'll need a base, you'll need your transparency, you'll need a foam piece, and you will need a top outline. So, let's see, I'm thinking of pink. I think pink will be nice. Either pink or maybe orange. Orange is nice, I like orange. Let's, let's go with orange. Okay, so I've got the base, I've got the foam, I've got the transparency piece I'm going to use, and I've got the outline, and we're going to put the sprinkles on the inside. Okay, so let me show you how to assemble this, and this is a little bit um, ticky. So I use these to help it out. So first thing you're going to do is put your base down, this is the base. And we're going to pick this up. It's really good if you have a fine tip glue. Tip one, fine tip glue. Tip two, oh my gosh, don't drop your stuff. Tip two is um, make sure you don't put excess glue on it. Tip three, let it dry. If you don't let this dry, then your shaky things are going to stick to the wet glue and it's going to aggravate you. So let's put a line of glue around the outside. I'm going to make sure it's glued really well. Okay, we're going to glue the foam. Okay, if you think that you've got too much glue on it, you can pat it in places, kind of like what I'm doing here. Just make sure it's covered. We're going to glue it down all the way. I have baby wipes or paper towels on hand, wet paper towels. Okay, so this is the particular part. Just getting this thing lined up. These pieces are a little unwieldy, so... You want to get it lined up as best you can. And these tweezers really help with that. Okay, kind of like pat it down in place. And then you can, for a second or two before the glue sets, you can, you can make sure that it's kind of on there right. Okay, just like that. Okay. Now, you're going to be tempted to put your shakers in there and assemble the next part. Don't do it. Don't do it. Set it aside. We're going to set it over there. Okay, while I set that over there, let's see, I'm going to remember the pieces. Let me put this over here so I know those pieces go with that. All right, so let, even though I did this one already, let me show you how I made this one. Okay, we're going to do, what are we going to do that with? I did it. Let me try a different color. Let me look at the stack here because I'll probably use it another day. I thought this this is the one I used because I just thought it was cute. It's a cute background. But I don't want two of them. So, which one am I going to do? Should we do orange? I kind of like that. Should we do pink? I'm liking pink. Let's do pink. And remember to get the top, not the not the not the small one. Make sure you get the big one, the big scoop. Okay, so we're gonna do this one. And I think I like this outline. Or I think I have that blue. This one. Um, I think I like this one. Maybe. No, I'm going to go with the darker one. Okay, cool. So let's do the same thing. We're going to glue our foam piece down. Using tweezers if you can. Make sure that you have a fine tip glue. You're going to add the glue to the foam. You don't want your shaker things to fall out, so make sure that you get a good line all the way around and keep moving if you don't have a super fine tip like me. I don't have one. Mine's clogged. As I said, so you can just kind of 
push the glue around you get excess on it if you have a fine tip even better you're ahead of the game have some baby wipes or paper towels on hand so I'm going to grab this off my hand and set it down so I can wipe the glue off my hand and not carry that other places all right so remember to grab this you can grab it just do let me do it with my hand so in case you don't have um, tweezers this is how you would line it up make sure you don't have any glue in the area that's going to be key to keep that glue out of the area and to keep your pieces dry okay so find a corner where it matches up and kind of tap it lightly down you don't want to push it down too far because you want to play with it a little okay so that looks good to me you can tell that the ugh. See what I did? I bumped it. Okay, if you bump it, it's okay. Just get it back to where it needs to go. Okay, you can tap the outside of it because it'll align with this piece. So you could tap pieces on the outside to get it to align with the base. Okay, so you can see that it's wet in there and wet coming out. Best thing you can do is put it over here to dry. Let it dry. So there's two. Okay, and we are going to let those dry. And then we're gonna come back and assemble them. Okay, so while those are drying, I am going to do the syrup on my two chocolate pieces. Okay, so grab out your implement, your plastic um, knife, your plastic spoon, your paste palette knife, um, I've got a plastic one, I've got a metal one, um, anything like this will work. And I'm going to show you how to make chocolate scoops. Okay, so let me show you some assembled ones. They are still a little tacky. Um, but I'm going to show them to you so you can kind of get an idea of what they look like. Okay. So I know that they're glittery. You don't have to put glitter on yours. But I had this old, very, very, very old, I don't even know what color this is, brownstone. It was on clearance a million years ago. It's a fine glitter. And... I just thought it would look good on there and look at that it does it looks great but you don't have to put glitter on there you can just this brown is very shiny anyway um, it's really pretty almost kind of coppery when it dries so you can just use that and it'll be fine so we're going to make two chocolate scoops and we are going to make a solid one so if you cut out a brown chocolate one this one um, we're gonna do that and then I have these two are foam so they are the middle of the shakers so when I cut out the foam of the shaker it left me with this middle foam piece these two little ones and so I took those and I did this on the foam all right so got those two and then this one so let me show you how I did that I am going to grab the same piece of paper that I used earlier to make these so here is just a plain brown piece of cardstock and then I have two of the foam pieces and we shall actually I may just use white one that one and then that one just to show you how it works all right there we go all right so first what you're going to do so I'm going to do this one last because I use the excess and I kind of you see how I made it kind of textured and bumpy I did these two first with the drippies so in order to get the drippies Okay, you're gonna open up your paint and in order to get the drippies you're going to 
hold it however is comfortable for you and you can practice if you would like let's see um i'm going to practice on this one so you can practice on here or on here whatever you want but you want to get like a good drop like that and then come up and then do it at various heights okay like a big glob and then come up does that make sense big glob and then come up okay so that's going to be the chocolate drips that's what forms the basis of that okay then what I do is I put it down you can use your tweezers or you can use your finger and I find a place that looks right to my eye so maybe about here and I kind of like zigzag it a little bit go all the way around and then I take you can use a spoon you can use the bowl of the spoon and to kind of do it like this if you'd like to do that or if you have a knife you are going to kind of take it and kind of pull it up just like this okay you're gonna pull that up just a little bit like this okay and then I just kind of tap it like this Pull it up and tap it. You want it even so it dries even and it's not a big glob in one place. And then I just kind of tap it until it looks right. To me, that doesn't look right. There we go. That looks right. Okay, I think I'm going to make a little... If it doesn't look right, like I just um, laid out the blob, just do another one. Okay. So that looks more like a drawer up. Okay. And then there you go. Just leave it. Don't touch it. You're going to be tempted to keep playing with it. Leave it alone. Okay. So that's one. So let me do another one. All right. So you can go up higher if you want. If you want to do it higher instead of low like that. You know whatever you would like to do um, whatever looks good for your eye and just make a drop like squeeze it and then come up squeeze it come up squeeze it come up okay and you could get a piece of scrap paper and practice if you want um, because I may be making it look easy because I've done it a lot. So, you know, grab a scrap paper, squeeze it, go up. Squeeze it, go up. Squeeze it, go up. Okay? Just like that. All right. So then, remember, we're going to kind of zigzag a little bit through here. And you want to go all the way around the edge. So all the way around the edge like this. And then just put some in the middle. Not too, too much because um, you don't want it to take too, too forever to dry. Um, but you're just going to kind of pull the syrup up, up to the top. Pull it up to the top. Okay. And then once you've pulled it up to the top, you can just kind of go back in and tap it a little bit to make it more textured. Make sure it's kind of even and it's covered everywhere. Okay, and let's turn around and see what it looks like. Sometimes it looks different upside down than right side up, and it does to me. So like this, I might kind of just play with it a little bit. Don't play with the drippies unless you're going to redo them. Um, I would just kind of only play with the top piece. Okay. And there you go. So there's two. There's one and two. And then for this one, what I did is I just covered the whole piece of paper in the um, in the paint. So I just kind of put enough on here. And I'm going to have to switch to tweezers. Okay. This is t-shirt paint, by the way. It dries like plasticky. It's really nice because 
Um, it's fabric paint. It's made to last a long time. It's like machine washable. So it will hold up in an album really nice. And it just looks real shiny and pretty when it's done. So I'm going to hold this down and I'm just going to kind of tap like this. I'm going to spread it all over the scoop. Make sure you get it all the way around. Cover the whole entire scoop first. And then make sure it's covered everywhere. Okay, and then you can go back and tap to kind of give it some dimension. If you have a spoon, it it gives it a different texture and dimension and it looks really good. You're just gonna tap it with a spoon like that. Or you can tap the knife like this till you get a pattern that resembles a chocolate hard coating, like a dipped cone or something like that. Okay. See? All right. So I'm tempted to play with this and manipulate it. I'm not going to do it. I'm going to put it aside. So here's, you can leave it just like that. And I am going to leave um these two just like that but for this one i'm going to show you what you can do if you have some super fine glitter or chunky glitter you know you can experiment i have some gold glitter i might get that and put a little sprinkle of gold at the top but this is a uh, called brownstone it's a fine glitter i have it in my stash so i'm just going to put a little bit there and i'm also going to put a little chunky glitter Got some gold chunky and I think that would look really cute at the top so do not have to do this but here are just some extra ideas if you want to be a little extra that's all okay so clean off your knife and then you can tap it into Tap it in. Okay, and I am going to just leave it alone. I'm going to put it over here and I'm going to leave it alone. I am going to push the glitter so it's rounded and not weird looking. So just kind of tap the edge to tap it back onto the canvas there and I'm going to leave it. I'm going to Literally pick this up and move it and leave it. All right, so now that we did that, we're gonna do the shakers. So we're letting the chocolate dry. And it will take a long time to dry, longer than probably the video. So you will wanna come back, mark your spot. You can look at the directory to see where this is at. Um, you can stop or pause here. <coughs> Excuse me, goodness and come back to here. So next we're gonna make the shakers. So you'll wanna come back to before we make the shakers and bookmark this section right here. Okay, so now we're going to take our dried foam pieces that we glued on and we're gonna make the shakers. This is really ticky. So this can be frustrating. Um, you have to be real delicate and kind of you know, if you are um, in a rush or if you're tired, you may not want to do this piece right now. You can come back and do this later. This is going to be very particular and you want to make sure that you're picking up the pieces and you're assembling it right because um, this part can be frustrating. So set yourself up for success. Take a deep breath. Pause the video. Come back to it. Whatever it is that you need to do, then we're going to do this piece. All right. So... Previously, we took the base, we glued the foam in, it's dry. Now we're going to put in, I'm going to put in um, this one. I think I was going to do it in here. And I'm going to do this. Okay, so now we are ready to assemble the shaker. So a tip is to put your glue on before you put the shaker pieces in. So we are going to put... Um, a line of glue 
If you have a fine tip, that is the best. Just put a little line of glue. Less is best. You do want to cover the entire piece of foam so the shaker doesn't separate later. Um, but also remember that a transparency is going to go on this. This is the point where you're going to want to play with it, I promise. This is the most tempting part. Okay, maybe just brush off some of the paint. You want enough to glue that transparency down, but you don't really want to get it, smoosh it out everywhere. So, like I just did there. Okay, so got the glue there. I'm gonna let that dry a second. And to put some on the other shaker. You could do all four if you want. I'm only going to do assemble two on camera, but if you want to go ahead and put your line of glue on all four, you go ahead, get them ready to go all at one time. I made several, so I don't need to make four more. So I'll show you how to make, I'll assemble two, so at least you can see how it's assembled. And you can make as many as you want with whatever kind of mixes you want. You can do every page of shaker, however you want to do it. Okay, just kind of wipe off the ex excess glue, but not don't wipe off too much. It's got to glue to the transparency, right? Okay, so don't get it on the inside or your stuff will stick. Okay. And if you do happen to do that, like I did, maybe use your powder tool to kind of, it's dry, but I just want to put maybe a little bit of powder tool. Okay. All right. So we are going to put, I'm going to put these and this one. Make sure you don't get it on the glue. So put it in. Okay. You don't want to put too many and you want them to be flat. So shake it a little bit to kind of get it flat. And this one is going to be the sprinkles. I think I've made four with that pack. So I didn't dump all of them in. I think this is like my fourth one from making that pack. And here you want to do the same. Put some sprinkles in. Don't overfill it. This will make about three or four shakers. Each pack will, and you want to you want to kind of not over shake it like I just did, but kind of shake it a little. If you get any on the glue like I just did, just pluck it off. You don't want it in between the transparency. Okay, all right. All right, so you have both of these. Here's the here's another ticky part. You want to take your transparency, and you don't want to get glue on it. If you get glue on it, you can't get it off. There's no wiping it off. I have tried. So I'm going to take this transparency. Don't touch it. You may have glue on your hands or whatever. Grab a piece of paper. Just kind of push down. Now, you're going to want to shake this. Remember, the glue is still slightly wet, so push down and move it over ever so slightly to dry. Let it dry. Don't touch it. Leave it alone. Let it dry. Okay. Same here. Okay. It's all flat in there. I'm going to grab a piece of transparency. You do not want glue on pieces. You don't want ink on it, so just drop it down like this. Okay, take your piece of paper or something where you're not going to put finger marks or uh, fingerprints or glue. So just kind of push it down slightly. And it's okay that the excess glue is there because one, we're going to cut this off, and two, the outline is going to hide it, okay? So don't be tempted to correct it or fix it or make it look amazing right now. You're just going to leave it, okay? We're going to let these dry. So I'm going to go off camera and um, while we're allowing these to dry and I'll come back. Okay, so this is dried. 
So we are going to put the top on it. I think I decided, did I decide that one? I think that's the one I decided. I liked it, the outline. Okay, so the reason we're doing this last is because we didn't want to shake it and um, make it crazy. So we're going to put these on and then let them dry. These will dry a lot quicker than this shaker and this foam well. So we are going to just put a teeny tiny bit on there on the back of the outline. This one doesn't have to be too much. You can just put some dots, you know, in places um, instead of a full line. And then you can kind of wipe it off with your finger if you want. Because this one is just going to be floating on the top. Okay. And then we'll keep wiping up excess glue you get it places you want to definitely wipe it up you don't want it to be too wet putting it onto the transparency it's very wet underneath here this one should be not as wet just a little bit of glue okay so make sure you get it lined up and push it down in a place where it lines up okay and then you're going to want to like maybe just kind of tap it into place. Um, you can kind of move it just for a second or two. It'll let you move it and line it around the die. You want to take something dry, like maybe your tool here, your tweezers, make sure they don't have any glue or any yuck on them. Just kind of tap it down all the way around. Okay. You're going to want to be tempted to do something about the glue and whatever, let it dry. So we're gonna put it over here, we're gonna let it dry, and I'll come back. Okay, so now we have dried. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our scissors, um, usually like fine detailed scissors are better, and we're going to cut this piece off, and we're just gonna cut around. So you could do it this way, or you could do it this way. I usually do it this way so I don't cut into my outline. And you're just going to trim off this acetate or transparency piece. If you get fingerprints, you want to make sure your fingers are clean. And if you get fingerprints on the transparency, you can take a microfiber cloth or a cloth like you clean your glasses with. Or if you have glasses, um, you can use a cloth like that. Um, anything that's not harsh, you can just kind of clean it off. Usually a screen cleaner, phone screen cleaner, microfiber are perfect for that. If you want to get super detailed, you can flip it over and kind of just trim it off as close as you can to the thing. Okay, so that's what it looks like. Let me move that. Let me get my microfiber cloth. So I have this one. I just kind of Clean it and there you go. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside, and here is the that one. And then also, I have these two that went in the kits. These are also available in the shop. If you look under the embellishments, I've got all kinds of shaker mixes, and you can put them in there. This is a watermelon one. This is a citrus one with pineapples and it's just really cute. Nice summer ones. And you just copy and repeat the last instructions. All right, so now that we've made our shakers and we've made our sticky chocolate pieces and they're drying, I am going to stop here and then I'm going to come back and the next thing we're going to do is put it all together in our album. We'll put the pages in our album next. All right, friends, see you in a minute.
All right, friends, so now we're ready to assemble our album. So let's put our bases in first. Okay, so we picked our bases earlier, and I have these and this one and these that I'm going to use. So on the front, I'm going to glue one of these khaki bases. Okay, so here's what's important to do with this album. If you just start gluing this one and go through, you'll end up with the wonky and all kinds of crazy heights. So you're going to want to do the, the front and the back to keep yourself aligned. So the front is going to go, you're going to be tempted to want to put this like here and then your scoops aren't gonna fit and you have this weird thing going on here. So you want to put your cones all the way out to the edge. Line them up with the edge, do the front one and then do the back one. And actually you can come off just a little bit farther than the edge if you want just a teeny tiny bit, but not much. You wanna align it with the outside edge. What I mean is, instead of gluing it flush, you can glue it like this. The only thing I don't like about that is it, that it this gets flippy. You wanna stabilize it, but if you like to extend it, you can do that, it's an option. I recommend that you glue it flush at the edge like that. So we're going to put a little bit of glue there. And we're gonna glue this here, okay? So, I'm gonna line it up on the edge there. And you're gonna make sure that it's lined up here, okay? You see that these two are aligned. So now you understand and know where the inside pieces need to line up because you put the front on and you put the back on. Okay, so you got the front and back on. So let's go through and glue in all of our foundation pieces, which are the cones and ovaries. Okay, so I'm going to put this pink one on the inside here. So I'm going to line it up with this one. Okay, it's nice and lined up there. It also gives you a little space to put your photos. Those are kind of big. I may have some smaller ones. Okay. All right, so we're going to do that one. What would look good opposite that? I'm thinking blue one. Okay, line it up to the edge just like that. Looks like actually um, shouldn't have wiped that off. It's part of gluing it back to back. So you glue them back to back, back to back. Squeeze it tight, make sure you don't have any excess glue that's gonna glue your album together. That would be bad. All that work and then excess glue, okay? Just keep on a going. Just keep on a keeping on. Putting your foundation cones in. Keep on a keeping on. Okay. 
Okay, make sure they're all lined up. Okay. Continuing on. Um, down all the pieces that I picked earlier. Okay, keep on going. I know I'm doing it fast. If you need to pause and catch up, you go ahead. It's really just gluing these bases down. Let's get it all lined up. If you want to check that, just make sure it's lined up, not showing the brown. There we go. Perfect. And we've got the back. And then there you go. Ouch. There is your album. So then it looks like this. You get all your foundation cones in. And the next fun thing is going to be gluing in the cones. Okay. So we need to decide how far out you want your cones to... I think that one's dry. I like the shaker on the front, so how far out do you want your cones to stick up? Do you want them to stick up pretty high or do you want them to go pretty low? Um, so that is kind of what I'm looking at right there. And I'm thinking about putting it on a double backer. So especially this front one, I think this front one should, since it'll get handled a lot, maybe double up on your paper, your cardstock. Let's double it up. And I think I'm gonna push it up to offset it a little bit so you can see the little orange there. That's cute. Okay, so remember don't put glue up here because, well actually you can, you can put you think about it yeah you can put glue up there because we're going to do them back to back so yes do glue up there i was going to say if it sticks up you don't want glue there so let's say you didn't put a cone on the inside right here i did let's say you didn't put the cone there and you just wanted to put like a little round photo or a small photo and there's no cone and you're not going to put a scoop you won't put the glue on if you are going to do scoops back to back which is what i'm going to do it's okay to put the glue all the way at the top because we are going to put them back to back match them up back to back okay all right so you are going to get your front one ready. I like to do like this and put this one on where I want it. Okay, and hold it. And then we're gonna get ready to put the cone on the back. I think that looks good to my eye, so that's where I'm gonna put them across. So we're gonna do the front one, then we're gonna do the back one so we can keep everything in the middle aligned. 
Um, we will have a couple double scoops though, so you may see them come out the top, but at least most of them, they won't be offset. They'll all come up at the same, the scoops will all come off the cone at the same spot, even if it's a double cone. All right, so I am going to put a foam dot because the front is very thick. Remember, because we doubled it over. So I'm going to put a foam dot in the middle and to help hold this thing up. So we got pink. I think I'm going to do a pink. here and I might do a double scoop just like that Let's go to the back and let's do the back piece. Okay. On the back. Um, hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think I like that. So on the back. Make sure that when we do this, it aligns with your scoops. Okay, I'm going to line it up. Okay, and then we're going to put the back on, which I think I want to be the chocolate, chocolate, chocolate. Line that up, and I want to double mat this one, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on now. Okay, so now we have the front and we have the back aligned and you could put a shaker on the back if you want um, you know that's cute you could put a shaker on the back I'm going to put mine on the inside but there you go so you got the front and the back so now you can get all your scoops in there I will say probably I'll do double scoops but if I do a double scoop I may still do it where it lines up at the top and then I do a double scoop farther down like that if I do a double scoop. So do whatever looks good for your eye or you can do double scoops on all of them. If you'd like a bigger album, like you'd like to fill out this area, you could move your cone in a slight bit and then do big double scoops and have like a bigger album. It'd probably be about a half inch bigger. If that's what you want, but I'm gonna do it like this. There are so many different ways to do this and so many options. Um, after you've played around and made a few, like I have here, you'll find all kinds of fun things that um, you may decide to do later on after you get the basics down pat of assembling the album. All right, so now I'm just gonna go through and I am going to add pieces and parts that I like. I decided to do my cute lemon with this one. You can also cut out limes. If you don't like lemons, you can cut out the yellow limes instead of lemons. Just think it's cute. Lemon sherbet, lemon ice cream. 
Okay, so go through and add your outlines where you want them on your scoops, or you can add them later. You could also put photos in here. So instead of cutting out scoops, you can take the die and cut out photos. And so then the photos fit inside the scoops. That might be my next project. I think that's a cute idea. Okay. I want to get them in the general area of being lined up so that's why I'm constantly checking it. I did a few and they were all wonky and it just irritated me. It might not irritate you so you do you. You do whatever looks good to your eye but I'm gonna keep checking to make sure that they're somewhat lined up. Cool. Alright. So, maybe this is the one we do a blue and orange. Okay, what should we put over here? Do we do our double chocolate chocolate? This is a uh, foam cutout from another project. It's a double side sticky foam. If you haven't bought any of this yet, this is a lot of fun. You can use it um, to pop things up. It die cuts really well. So, okay. So I should probably put This one lower, this one higher. Okay, so there's my double chocolate scoop. Make sure it closes in there, okay? Then we're going to put the blue orange right here. See how it's wonky? Straighten it up a little bit. Okay, definitely looks better. Here's where my other shaker will go. this as a guide. Oops. I don't think I've got enough Ugh! glue on the bottom there. Let's get some more glue on there. There we go. Okay, Let's see how I need to straighten it up a little bit. Perfect. All right. What else? What else? What else? like that. Okay. We are on a roll here. On a roll. Maybe we do a reciprocal up here and do a double. Could be cute.
Oops. I meant for that to go there. Wrong spot. Okay, so let's see what will we do here. Green maybe? Yep, green looks good. two going to be I've done this one yet let's look okay yes I did I did it right there so let's see Last two. What are they going to do? Still think I like it though. Yeah. Still think I'm going to use it. Even though I used it already, I'm going to use it again. Okay. I'm going to line that up. And what can the last one be? How about pink? How about a double scoop? I'll do one down here and we'll do this one. At the top. Okay. And then that's it. Okay. All right, so next I am going to come back and we are going to put, decide if we want to put outlines on some of the scoops. All right, so these are the outlines I've decided I want to go in my album and I've pushed everything else away. So I am going to now glue these outlines down. So that is taking your liquid glue, the fine tip, and you can use tweezers, which is what I think I'm going to do. And I'm just going to put a little bit of glue. Doesn't have to be perfect, just in the outline here. Oops. Okay, and you just want to line it up. And I'm going to do this one offset because I did a double scoop and I kind of like the patterns on it. So I said line it up, but I didn't line it up. This one I didn't want to line up. I just think it looks cute with this like triple, almost like a scallop edge. So did that one like that. Um, I'm going to put a green one on this one. A little bit of glue on the outline. Just a dab, a little dab will do you. Okay, and you can just kind of spread it or wipe off the excess. You don't have to do this, I just do it. Make sure you wipe your hands if you do that so you don't carry it to other places on the project. Okay, and I'm just gonna, so this one I'm gonna line up. Just line it up. Got glue all in my fingernails. And push it down once you get it lined up. See how I've got a little bit of glue there. Definitely want to pat it, wipe off that excess glue. Okay. All right. So since this was blue, 
I have the outline of the same paper. I'm going to put it over here on the orange. It's coming together nicely, huh? And can you imagine all the different ways that you can now make ice cream cones, not only for your journals, your scrapbooks, your more mini albums. There are so many different ways and so many different ideas on how to use this cute, very simple die over and over and over to make shakers. So many possibilities. If you don't have this die and you're interested in it, you can still buy it in my shop. It's the Ice Cream Cone by Dress Your Craft. Okay, then I'm going to put pink on this one, I think. I think that's what I was going to do. Yes, I think that looks good. And blue on this one. And I think I'm just going to put pink on the chocolate. Oh, now yeah I guess so I think I wanted to bring that pink in okay last couple ones and then we will start looking at photos some of the little square photos that I pulled out and matted may be a little too big for this album so I may need to print a few smaller ones little small squares we shall see I think the next one I do I'm going to try cutting out photos and put them in the cone and then put this outline over it. I think that would be cute. Or you could put them in the shaker as the base of the shaker. I think that would be cute as well. I was going to, and I'm gonna try it in a minute, so we'll see. We'll see if my idea is gonna work on how I wanted to put the photos in. Um, not sure yet or not, hope so. If not, we'll try something else. I also have some different punches and things where you could punch small, you know, circles or small photos out. So I have that up my sleeve as well to show you some other techniques on how to add photos. So we'll see what works best. It'll be different for each kind of album you do. If you do double scoops, you can get larger pictures in. Um, if you do the single scoops like I did, you have to use smaller pictures. So see how the picture photos go. Okay, and then let's see if this is going to glue. I'm worried that this is too lumpy. I think it is too lumpy. I'm not sure that that's going to glue down nicely, so I'm going to foresee that. And yellow looks good with that. Should I do the yellow here? Hmm, I like that. Let's go with that. And now we're going to put our cherries on and hearts. Let's see. I think I might cut hearts out of some of the spare pieces. Okay. So definitely pink cherry should go on the chocolate like it's a split okay I'm gonna do one over here too so let's do one there I definitely think one should go there cute this looks like a heart. Maybe a heart out of the same of that. Cute. Okay. Maybe that same heart on the side too. So 
So it matches side to side. This looks like it needs a cherry. What do you think? I think, yes. I think, yes. Maybe right there. Oops, let's get it on that scoop a little more. You may have some other pieces of fruit or cute things that you could add. Might not have to always be that. Maybe. Mm, what about a heart on this one? What color? What color? Mm, that's cute. What about... Put some of that pink in there. Let's see what we have so far. Got the shaker on the front. We've got our bases and our cones, our outlines, our cherries, our hearts glued in. So now we have a nice cute foundation to start decorating. So the last thing that I'm going to do before I transition to the next part, which is adding finishing off so it's going to be adding photos and adding some of the ephemera and the word strips that's next but before I do that I'm going to take some distress ink I decided to ink a little bit so I have some foam blenders here so I am going to just go back and use a little bit of a foam blender to just give it a little bit of interest you don't have to do that you could do it um, before it gets in here. I didn't know how I was gonna layer it all, so I usually do it last, but you can do it first if um, you're more decisive than I am and ink it before you put it in. Because that definitely works. Um, this is Mermaid, that was Mustard Seed. This is Mermaid Lagoon. Just a little bit, not a lot. Just a little, little bit. Just a little bit. This is speckled egg. Give it a little bit of dimension, just a little bit of shading. Doesn't need a lot. All right. Definitely wanted to get this pink in somewhere. Let's see what we can do with that. This is picked raspberry. Picked raspberry. Ooh, that's cute. Okay. done. I have the brown out to do a little chocolate shading. I'm not sure where I'm going to do that. I'm going to check on that before I decide to do that. I don't think I have a place for that because this, well, I guess I could. Mm, no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I think it looks good like it is and I'm going to leave it alone. All right. So now that we've done this, 
The next step is adding photos and adding our ephemera. All right, so I washed all that glue off my fingers, um, all that sticky, and I've cut out my word strips, and I may trim them down just a little bit more. Uh, if you don't have these word strips, you can use Courier Standard, and it's a nice typewriter font, or other pieces of ephemera, print it out on cardstock and cut it out. So very sweet, treat yourself, you are sweet, sweet treats, some are fun. And then I also have some photos here. I did this before I assembled the album. I may or may not use these, but I went through and printed out ice cream. So I use Google Photos because it tags automatically and you can put in keyword ice cream. And when I typed in ice cream, it, um, it's where I upload or back up all my photos to. I pay for a subscription. Anyway, when I typed in ice cream, it gave me every time an ice cream was in the photo. So I had tons and tons of tons of times we went and got ice cream. So I printed them all out. I may not have printed them small enough. We'll see. And I have some photos here to show you how to use punches um, to cut some out. So for this part, you're going to need your word strips. You're going to need your die cut pack if you have it or just grab out some die cuts or small um, sayings or summer and little photos in your album. Okay, so that's what we're going to do next. All right, I am going to pause a second and get a little bin. I like to put my items in a bin. So... All right, so here's my little tray, and I'm going to put sweet treats. If you don't have a sweet treats pack, I do have a small handful in shop. They were from last year, and they have some really great ice cream sayings in here, so that's why I'm using it. I've got little ice cream cones, little popsicles and treats, so... I'm going to be using a few. I think I may have like five or six packs left. I'm not really sure. Um, but you can go grab one. If you're going to do, use this tutorial and purchase the ice cream die or the grid cone, you might as well stick this in your basket too. And if you got the kit, um, this was in the kit. So, all right. So let's see how we're going to do this. My idea was going to be putting them like this and they are all kind of the same so they all stick out like this throughout the book. I'm not sure if that's going to work or not. It may cover too much of the ice cream so let's see. Uh, see what I'm worried about? It's like it covers all that work here. You know? So I'm not sure I'm going to like that. So what I will do before I get started, and maybe cut some smaller ones out, I'm going to show you how to use punches. So what I could have done maybe is gotten a smaller punch and looking for my small round one. Do I have one? Or like even this one here, right? So. Just taking your punch, punching it out. That's cute. And then I think this punch, I think this one would fit. So let's let's cut out this little ice cream. See, that would be perfect. So I may go back and cut print these photos smaller. Yeah, and see if I can get them in. I think punching them is going to be too much. But I think I could probably get them down to a smaller size and put them in there. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to do that on camera because you don't need to see me do that. Um, but what I will do is I will maybe decorate a couple pages and put my word strips on. And you can decorate yours however you want to decorate yours. So this is kind of the idea here. You can put it way in there. 
Your little photo in. That didn't work out, did it? Okay, well, so much for that. So use look good glue. Right. Just rolled my little word right up into my glue thing. All right, so sweet treats, then maybe Let's see what I've got. It's a cute little heart. Nice yeah, couple of them. So we could use those instead of cutting one out if you don't have a little punch. Some sayings, good life, summer, happy, fun. It's a good one. What does that one say? Keep them cool. Oh, those are nice too. So I think I'm going to use a few of these to assemble in my album. So these little strips too if you wanted to. Okay, so very sweet. Put like a little pop dot. I'm um, not a pop dot, a um enamel dot. That'd be cute. I probably will probably go find me a little enamel dot to put right there. Let's see what else we got. Um some little ones that might fit in there okay. Could use a bit of washi. Maybe make a little hinge. I'll most likely have to print out some small ones too just to get them all in there. So there we go. Just a little hinge. What can we put on the back of that? So even more ideas. Make a little washy hinge. Maybe put them in between the ice cream cones. Maybe cut this out. Photo out. See what else we can get in there. You know, I think that's how I'm going to do this album. I think I'm going to do washi hinges. Just because I printed these photos too big and I think it would be cute. So that's how I'll assemble the rest of them. I'll be able to get all of my photos in there and not cover up my ice cream. Super cute. I have some of the sun washi in the shop as well if you're interested. And using the same kind, I have some black sun washi too. I have this yellow one and I have it in black, black and white.
great thing about washi is it's flexible and you can just pretty much stick it anywhere. There you go. Look. How cute. Let's roll with that idea. Let's roll with it. Sometimes things don't turn out as planned, but it's okay. I think this is kind of cute. It's kind of cuter or better. But I still want to do some little photos. So I will probably make one and then share it on my page, what I made. Because I plan on making tons of ice cream albums. Tons and tons. Tons and tons. And I would love to see what you make with yours. Please post. Come over to Journals for Life fans and post what you make. I want some ideas from you. Give me some of your ideas. What should my next one look like? It's me and Alex twice. Let's do that. I am so messy. Let's do it this way so I can put the washi on it. Perfect. So, so far all my pictures are lining up nice. So when you hold it like this, you can just flip through it. Okay. Lastly, lastly, not lastly, I'm going to take these and carry them on to another album. Which one do I like? I think I've got Alex. Got me and Viv, um, Vivian and Lillian, Lillian, me and Steven, Lillian, Alex, Mom and Alex. Um, let's do Vivian again, and let's do let's do Vivian, Vivian, because we didn't do Vivian, Vivian. As you can see, there are multiple ways to make an album. After you get your foundation pages in there, there are many ways to add photos and ephemera and things like that. So you add it how you would like and add photos or not. It would be cute just to flip through, even if you do some little round journal spots. So I have a round punch and I showed you this punch. And I showed you the cute little tag punch. So you could punch the photos out of that, um, print them really small, and use them in the album. Or you can maybe just make a round um, journal spot. Okay, so if you, let's say you put the, um, you cut the ice cream scoop. So you cut the picture out using this die. You could maybe put a little washi tape hinge with your journaling, saying this is where we were, blah, blah, blah. You can hinge it in there, or you could journal here. There's so many different ways to play with this die and with this album. And I really like how that turned out. I will add a couple more little things, and we will call this quits. All right, so I embellished off camera. 
I'm going to flip through it and show you my cute little album and what I did. And then we're going to add our cute little charm. So on the last part, I showed you that I decided to hinge my photos in so I wouldn't cover up my ice cream. And that actually worked out really well. I kept them all in the same spot, just like I kept all the ice cream cones in the same spot. And it actually works out really well. So here we are. Got the front shaker. And I added enamel dots all the way through. So I added this enamel dot. I added this little enamel dot this one. I added this little chipboard frame. So I flipped through to see if I had any ice cream things and I found these and I was like, ooh, these will fit these little photos perfectly. So dig around in your stash and see what you got. Um, look at this cute little rainbow. This is so colorful here. Just thought that was cute. This came from the Sweet Treats pack with your sprinkle shaker couple enamel dots, um, another little frame, too cute. This came from the die cut pack, and then you got some enamel dots. Got another little enamel person. I got glue on my fingers and in my fingernails, I'm sorry. So this little guy, and then Happy from the die cut pack, an enamel heart, an enamel star, Love you from the pack, heart layered on top of the cherry, summer scene from the pack, enamel dots. This is a dress my craft die. I do have that lemon. It's lemons and lemons if you're interested. I put a little strip in here on the hand with another little enamel heart. I put the heart from the die cut pack, keeping cool. This one from the die cut pack, enamel dots. This came from the die cut pack, an enamel heart. This frame from that same frame pack that I had. It's very old. It's from my stash. I just grabbed them out to do some embellish. Always embellish last. I put my foundation pages, then I put my photos, and then I embellish. It's just my process. I do that in my book and in my journal. I don't go page by page. I just kind of do it all at one time. So that's how I do it. So if you um, are different, um, next time maybe go through your stash and pull out some things that you think that you would like and maybe have them available and do it as you go. For me, I just go do it last. Got some enamel dots. I put an enamel cherry dot up there. Remember, I couldn't figure out if I liked the paper dot. I didn't like it, but this enamel dot is nice and shiny just like the chocolate is, so it works out well and I didn't do anything back here. So there's my cute little album really really cute all right so we're going to put this on and there's a couple ways you can do it you can put it on here make a little hole and it is right out the back or as I did it on this one you can put it at the top in the back in your last one so you can cut a hole here and then hang it here so it's kind of in the back. It depends on what you like. So for this one, I think the way this album turned out, I don't want to cut a hole there. I want to put it in the spine and I think I want to put the dangle in the spine. So that's what I'm gonna do with this one. So grab your either hole punch or your Crocodile, and we're just going to put a hole right there. Let's see if I can get some of this glue off my finger. All right, so you could um, poke the hole before you assemble it. I didn't know that I was going to put it there. I planned on putting it here like I did that one, but now that I've changed my mind, um, my crocodile will still fit in there. So if you have a hole punch or if that wasn't convenient, just keep that in mind for next time to maybe punch your hole first. Um, but there you go. There you have it. And so I would like it to fit kind of more like that. There we go. So it looks like this. And there we are. There is our full assembled book with our cute little charm and our shakers and our ice cream photos. 
I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you use this tutorial for many years to come with that die. And I'll see you at the chat. Bye, friends.